Good morning. Thank you again for joining me on this video. You know, we've got an interesting market out there, wonderful market for sellers especially, and I'm sure I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but sellers are, in many cases, are capitalizing on the market by receiving multiple offers and almost a bidding war and receiving a lot more money than they were asking. In fact, in many cases, a lot more money than the listing agent ever expected them to receive. Of course, sellers are hearing these stories, and then when they list their homes, they're wanting to actually get into this process by underlisting their property and inviting multiple offers. And realtors are fitting into that by using a 244, delaying presentation of offers in the hope of getting multiple offers and getting that bidding frenzy and ending up with absolute top dollar for their seller. We understand that process. The question that comes up by sellers when they list their property with that ploy in mind, well, what happens do I have to sell if somebody offers me my asking price because I'm not prepared to sell it for that price? And the answer very simply is no, you don't have to sell. And the reason is an issue in law that I want to share with you called invitation to treat. If the Hudson Bay Company is advertising socks for $10, and if I go into the Hudson Bay Company when I can, and I go in front of the counter, and on the counter is a pair of socks, and I give them $10, well, $11.30 because of tax, they have to take the money and they have to sell me the socks. If they have the socks, they have to sell them because they were advertising them for sale. When you list a property, you are not doing the same thing as the Hudson Bay Company. What you are doing is you're creating an invitation to treat. And what that means is that the seller is inviting offers that he will consider. He doesn't have to accept them. When an offer comes in, he can accept it, he can flat out reject it, or he can counter. And you know what? He can counter at any price he wants. He can counter at far above the asking price if he so chooses. It's his choice. Well, the problem is that it creates certain problems for the buyer and the buyer agent when you go through the process of asking a certain price and the seller has no intent of honoring it. Suppose, and I've seen this happen, suppose an agent puts in a 244, delays presentation for four or five days, the time comes, he maybe gets one or two offers, maybe he only gets one offer. The offer comes in, it comes in at or slightly above asking price, no conditions, but the seller isn't prepared to accept that. The seller doesn't sign it back, he just says no. The agent, understandably, and the buyer, understandably, is very upset. They say, I don't understand. He was asking 510000 I offered him 525000 I gave him his closing. I gave him no conditions. I gave him everything he wanted, and he didn't accept it. Not only did he accept it, he didn't even give me a counter of what he wants to accept. He just said, sorry, try again. So it creates a certain amount of problem. And I think we have a moral obligation to the industry, to our fellow co-workers, to rectify these problems when they occur. I don't blame a seller for trying to get maximum money. I don't blame a seller for trying to create a, a bidding war if he, if he can. Now, some agents are saying, well, I want a 24 or 48 hour irrevocable in the hope of getting more than one offer without using the 244 and without the delay tactics. And that's maybe a better way of doing it. But if you try with the lower than realistic market price and the delayed presentation and it doesn't work out for your seller, he doesn't get the kind of money that he's hoping to get, maybe the thing to do at that point is to reservice the listing, bring it back on at what's a fair market value and see what the market's willing to pay. And that way you're not going to have the same kind of problems with your fellow realtors and with buyers that you'd have otherwise. The other question that might come up is what about financial? If you bring in an offer or more than one offer and it meets the criteria of the asking price, is the seller obligated to pay a commission? And the answer is maybe. Used to be kind of a rule of thumb that if uh, an offer was uh, received and it was unconditional and it met the criteria of the seller and the seller wasn't prepared to enter into an agreement, you've done your job, you've provided a buyer who's ready, willing, and able to buy the property, and so the seller owes you a commission. Well, it's not always that simple, especially in today's climate, where you maybe have 10 offers that meet the criteria. The, the courts are never going to award all 10 agents commission. And in fact, that brings up another point. The agent who procures the offer can't really launch the lawsuit against the seller. You're the one that has them under contract. 
you're the listing agent, you'd have to initiate the lawsuit. And a lot of agents are going to be very reluctant to do that because of the relationship they have with their seller. Of course, but let's picture, let's just take a minute and talk about this lawsuit issue. Let's suppose you've got an accepted offer. It's unconditional and then it doesn't close. Does it give rise to uh, commission being paid? And I would say yes, but it's going to depend who's in breach. If it doesn't close because the seller flat out changed his mind, and we've had this happen a couple of times, the market goes up in value, it's a long closing, it gets closer to the closing, the seller says, I think I could have got more money, I'm not going to close. Well, he's in breach. So in the court size, he owes the, the agent a commission because the agent's fulfilled his obligations. What about if it's the buyer? The buyer just changes his mind. He says, I thought about it, I don't want the property any longer. Well, if you have the buyer under a BRA, a buyer representation agreement, that buyer representation agreement says that if I don't collect the commission from the deal, I'm going to collect the commission from you, and the agent who represents the buyer can sue his buyer for commission. Not the seller. You didn't provide a buyer who's ready, willing, and able to close, but the buyer. And so it's possible, whether or not it's practical is another matter. By the time you go through the courts and you pay the lawyer and so on, it may not be practical, but at least the options are open to you. What I'm trying to say, though, is when you go to take a listing, having getting aside this business about lawsuits, uh, when you take a listing and you talk to your seller about expected prices and they talk about delayed presentation of offers and 244s and so on, counsel them with the things that can and cannot go wrong and walk them through the process and say, what happens if we don't get multiple offers? What happens if we don't get this figure? And set them up the same way as you did before the hectic market when they wanted more money than the property was worth. And you might say to them, well, we'll try it for a couple of weeks, but if we don't get so much money, we're going to reduce the price. Say to them, well, we'll try it. I don't mind, we'll try it, but if it doesn't meet your criteria, it doesn't make sense to just keep on on the market with property asking price that's unrealistic when we're not prepared to accept it. At that point, we need to resurface the listing. You're doing the best, I think, that way for your seller, and you're also doing your best interest of the general public and your fellow realtor as well. Thank you very much for listening to this video, and I'll talk to you again very soon.